Have you told your friends that you see ghosts? Oh, absolutely not. Gina Rodriguez returns in Not Dead Yet. I'm back, baby. Who is up? Oh, she's the obituary writer. And Brad Garrett joins the brilliant ensemble cast. Titan, Maverick, Titan of all Mavericks. These are all words used to describe me. Baby, I got you shook, got you shook. Not Dead Yet, season premiere. Tonight, 8.30, 7.30 Central on ABC and stream on Hulu. Welcome to Horror Movie Night, a mystical land full of fairies, elves, talking tree stumps, and a nasty little troll. I'm Matt Kelly. We just moved here. My son Scott and our potentially possessed guest, co-host Katie, joins us as we discuss Troll on Horror Movie Night. Hey guys, I picked this one. This one was me, and I'm glad I picked this one, and I don't care if you guys hated it. Hey, can I just (laughs) say thank you? (laughs) And this movie fucking rules. I love this movie. (laughs) It's <laughs> strange and really scary, but I loved it. <laughs> I really like this movie because I feel like Troll 2 gets a ton of attention for being like this batshit crazy bad movie. But like Troll 1 is equally batshit crazy. Like it's not like they took a normal movie and then went crazy with it. Like this movie is absurd and I love every second of it. Well, this movie feels like it feels kind of like a kid's movie almost, but not, but because it's like, so, um, it's very, it's very lighthearted. Yeah. People get murdered and turned into monsters and shit, but like, it's what a kid would imagine a horror movie would be like, you know, there's like a singing part and the monster is kind of like a wizened old man. Like he's always smiling. It's so funny. (laughs) It's like uh, the Feebles meet Labyrinth. That's what yeah. I think. It's- <laughs> That's a great, yeah. Wow. Um, so one of my favorite things about this movie is that it's the Harry Potter family yes, dealing with them. Harry Potter Jr. <laughs> uh, so the, the Harry Potter family moves into their new apartment complex. And there's actually this really cool scene right out the gate that I think is one of the most unique ways to introduce your entire cast of characters, which is that the fire alarm gets set off and you just have every cast member that lives in this apartment coming down and basically doing like a one minute monologue about who they are as a character. (laughs) So I don't think that's as unique as you think it is because that's straight out of a stage play. Oh, absolutely. But it does lead to, uh, Easily the best of all of the tenants, in my opinion, uh, which is Sonny Bono, who's just the sleaziest dude. And he's just that like, was, oh, my God, that's Sonny Bono. Holy he's like, shit. I'm a swinger. <laughs> like, <he's>, no shame. <laughs> no shame at all. Uh, but as right before the fire alarm, the youngest Potter child, Wendy, uh, becomes possessed by a troll in the basement. It just happens. There's not even a mystery put up to it. It's just <laughs> I like that. I think it's fun. Say before we get into any of this, the intro to this movie is the longest fucking intro I've ever <laughs> And I was sitting there just waiting and waiting and waiting. It, it was just too long. Way too long. They well, Chucky Band put the money up for this and he's like, you know what? If I'm putting the money up for this movie, you're going to listen to this entire score. And I actually, the, the first notes came in, like started to strain through and I'm like, this has to be Charles Band, right? And so I, I like, you know, to like <laughs> got, got, to, got over to IMDb and I was like, oh my God, Chucky Band did all the music for this. Um, he has a very, very particular tone and style to his soundtracking. So uh, that's that's my uh, that's my suggestion is that he was like I will bankroll this if you <laughs> let me have an obscenely long intro scroll. Well, and this movie also has like 
for a Chucky band movie has a weirdly eccentric cast of people because so weird. It's all D list D list people, but they're all people that we've talked about in other movies. Well, it's it's Sonny Bono, which is weird that he's in this. You've got Julia Louise Dreyfus in here before Seinfeld. Yeah. And then the old witch is the little girl from Lost in Space. <laughs> oh, shit. And you know what the, old, the e- equally awesome thing is, is that when she gets young and hot, it's her daughter. Yeah. That's so I mean, like it's le- legitimately that woman's daughter. Her name is. Um, Ju- the the old Eunice is June Lockhart, and young Eunice is her daughter Anne Lockhart. It's just so fun and cool. Like this movie had, I I, I spent a long time um, reading through the IMDb, and there's actually a making of troll that I did not get a chance to watch before this episode, but um, I'll post it in the comments, or I mean, I'll I'll post it on the the group when we're when we eventually put this out. But man, this movie is just. It, there's so much fun, so many fun little Easter eggs in it. It's just really, it's just like a really entertaining film. Cause like, I remember the cover of this, like the box art. Um, and I had completely forgotten about it because this movie is so overshadowed by troll two that nobody ever thinks about it. Like I've never given it a chance. This was my first watch. Well, and do you recognize who the father is in troll? It's fucking, um, Mo. Yeah. <laughs> It's Mo from the stuff. <laughs> yeah, and um, Malcolm, the the short guy in this. Uh, it's Phil Fondacaro. That's the guy that was in ha- uh, Hard Rock Zombies. And, and, Bord- and Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah, and Bordello of Blood. And he, he does double duty because he plays Malcolm and yeah. he plays the troll. It's funny so- because one of my first notes after we meet Malcolm is, I bet he's playing the troll. And then like at the end, I'm like, <laughs> vindicated. <laughs> I looked it up. He also plays an Ewok and cousin it. in the Adam Wow. Family. Holy yeah. shit, man. And he was in uh, Willow, no. but not as Willow. <laughs> no, he, yeah. he's, he's the best friend. That's his, that's the way he sounds in Willow. According to his IMDb, this is depressing as hell. So you know how IMDb you go on there and it's like the four films that IMDb declares you're most well known for. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. when I click into it, it's Willow. It's him playing an Ewok in Return of the Jedi. It's him doing a voice in the Black Cauldron and it's him being Greaser Greg in the Garbage Pail Kids movie. So, <laughs> I'm going right, strong I was disagree. <laughs> I was with you until the fourth one. Wow. <laughs> That's so weird. It's like, I agree with Katie. Sabrina should be right. Cause that's what I've always remembered him from is Sabrina, the teenage witch. He would always pop in his Roland. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah I'm not, I'm not going to disagree. <laughs> I think that I do think though, that people that do mo- and anybody can tell me I'm wrong because this is just a, 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 a stupid theory. I've done no research on, but I, I'm guessing that IMDB veers very hard to film for people that are mostly film actors. So since he did a lot of film and then did Sabrina later, I'm guessing that, especially since Sabrina is not like a critically acclaimed TV show, this, although he was in multiple seasons of it, I'm yeah. guessing that, that it's yeah, He was like, like a super reoccurring character. Oh, yeah. So basically, I mean, there's not much in the, in the realm of plot. The troll is just going room to room and turning people into different mystical characters creatures when he turns malcolm into an elf it is the creepiest looking puppet it looks like danny trejo <laughs> like <it's, laughs> but uh i i do like that uh julia louise dreyfus just turns into this weird fairy that just keeps giggling and spinning yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think i, I want to see the process of how that happened it was just like oh they left and then came back and then she's just like brain dead or something <laughs> laughing I think that if you're coming to this movie looking for logic, you're in the wrong place and it's just not going to be a good time. But like the, I have all of my notes are I, I have notes in two things. I didn't take any notes about things that actually happen in this because I didn't have to. But my notes are quotes and reactions to the absolute craziness on the screen. It's all that's all that this movie is. It's like. Holy shit, this really just happened. So my favorite part in this entire movie <laughs> is the dad dancing around to, <laughs> to what sounds like Devo attempting to cover Summertime Blues and Foxy Lady simultaneously. Yes. <laughs> it's like the only way to describe it. It is the most insane version of Summertime Blues I've ever heard in my life. 
I love the look that his wife gives him. She's just like hands on hips, head cocked, like, oh, you. <laughs> but he's like giving it like I, I will confess right now. If you want to know what I look like when I am alone when listening dance, to music, yeah. I am no, this dude, guy. Like <laughs> You fucking dance like that in public, too. I know because I've seen the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it's no secret. <laughs> but like I love that scene and it has. No business. It provides nothing. It is just to pad out time. Like, that's the only reason it's here. Um, meanwhile, older Harry befriends the the witch that lives on the uh, the top floor. Oh, you mean younger? Harry Potter Jr.? Yes, yes. Harry Potter Jr. Um, and the witch has the most adorable talking plant that I could possibly imagine. That mushroom. <laughs> yeah, so, like, the funniest part about that is that she's talking to the mushroom and then... Uh, Junior comes up and she just puts a lampshade on it. <laughs> well, he's drunk. <laughs> um, yes, because this movie takes place in 1950. <laughs> why are these people letting children in their fucking apartment? Yeah, like there's no reason why. Okay, if a little girl wanted to come and hang out in my apartment and I lived alone, I'd be like, sorry, this is just jail waiting to happen. Go away. <laughs> like the Slinger guy, he was like, yeah, come on in. Like, that's very yeah, questionable. It was weird because it was like yeah. he was playing both like, I don't want you to be here. But it's like, well, then don't let her in. Like, it's not there's no law that says you have to let a child into your house if they knock on the door. I would never let an unknown child into my fucking apartment. I wouldn't let a regular an unknown child into my apartment without supervision. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's just because I'm a guy and paranoid, but you just don't want to deal with that. I'm pretty much just trying to say I hate children. <laughs> what what you're getting to is that you can't stand children. Um, uh, me- so the, the best part about this movie is that, well, okay, the best and worst part is that this movie has so many troll boogers. Like, Ernest. <laughs> Why are they all men? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like. Ernest Scared Stupid has only a modicum, maybe like a tablespoon more troll booger in it than this movie. This movie is so gooey, but none of the kids have boogery noses, which totally takes me out of it because you've never met a kid that ha- hasn't had like a hanger or like crust <laughs> around one. <laughs> um, so meanwhile, Wendy is bef- uh, befriending Malcolm because she mistakes him as an elf in her like troll. Which form. is like, Kind of fucked up, you yeah. know? Like, the 80s were an odd time where, okay, and also, you know how I always get really jazzed about, on the podcast, about um, short people getting work? Yeah. Um, but he takes all the work in this movie. Like, he's not, it's not even fair. You know, isn't there like a short people, like a, a union for short people in Hollywood? And they're like, yo, uh, Phil Fondacaro over here, he's he's taking all of our jobs. And then they're like, no, no, rah, rah. Like they all get into like a, you know, a, a pitchfork party over Phil Fondacaro taking two spots instead of one in this movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? That's not weird. <laughs> you are you are like the biggest defender of little people getting work. I'm- I think that it's important because, you know, I, I, we don't want a bunch of dudes walking around on their knees. So not like Gary Oldman. Well, <laughs> I was thinking more Frodo. Um, but hey, Katie, um, for anybody that doesn't know you personally, um, can you just explain how big of a crush you have on um, Elijah, Elijah Wood? Wood? Yeah, the most probably disturbing crush that anyone has ever had on. Oh, no, he's got the bluest eyes. He's <laughs> he's gorgeous. <laughs> I know where he lives. Oh my God. I, I, I think that we need to point out something real quick here. Katie's an attractive young woman and she like has this obsession with a really weird celebrity. Like, it, and, and she knows where he lives. Like, I don't I think don't, it's that weird of a celebrity. I've met so many people who love Elijah Wood because they grew up on Elijah Wood as a kid. And like he actually, unlike 99% of child actors, actually turn out to be an attractive guy as well. Like most of them look like train wrecks. Yeah, well, I mean, we're not talking about the guy that was in uh, The Sixth Sense or anything <laughs> like that. Of course, that's the one person that's coming to mind. But um, I guess I'm just I, I want to point out the fact that like her obsession runs real deep. It's not like she's obsessed with 
Bradley Cooper or Chris Pratt or someone like that who's like a more traditional sex icon. Uh, I don't find either of those guys attractive. No, no. Actually, Katie and I had a lengthy Facebook message conversation um, about Elijah Wood and and about guys that she finds attractive. And she's like, yeah, no tattoos. And I'm like, but you have tattoos. And she's like, yeah, I'm a paradox. And then she was like, yeah, Elijah Wood, they got to be skinny. They kind of need to have, they need to look a little ratty. And then I was like, but why? And she doesn't have an answer. I don't. It's it's so strange. My friends make fun of me all the time because the type is square is what I call it. Well, it's it's weird because I can't be creepy on like like social media anymore about Elijah Wood because I'm actually <laughs> friends with people who are friends with him. <laughs> and so I'm like, going to get back it. to him and I'm going to get a restraining order in the mail. No, he's going to be like, yeah, send her my way. Because like, I feel like the most, most of the people that would be like, yeah, Elijah Wood 2018 is my spirit animal slash the person that I want to have blood play with. Um, <laughs> it, it, they're usually either one men. And I don't think that Elijah Wood is into that. But I mean, if he is, I don't give a shit, but I'm saying I'm pretty sure he's, he's a heterosexual guy. And, and it, the vast majority of them are probably, you know, like, 400 pounds plus because i mean if you watch the greasy strangler he doesn't really go for mainstream hollywood anymore so this is kind of what i'm getting at is that you're an anomaly and probably he wants i mean i don't but i don't okay so we're talking a lot about elijah wood but i don't blame him i don't blame him for like not wanting to do like he is going to live off of money from Lord of the Rings for the rest of his life. So he can do whatever the fuck he wants now. So like, did you not, I don't know if I've sent you the picture where I went to the Texas film awards. He DJed it with final records. (laughs) That's what he does. According according to his Wikipedia page, Elijah Wood is a music lover owning a collection of roughly 4,000 vinyl records and CDs and his site at the Smashing Pumpkins as his favorite band. Not surprised. And he lives across the street from a really good vegan restaurant that I love. But he's got oh. tattoos. He's got a tattoo. Uh, never mind. It's off. Just. <laughs> <laughs> what the fun. The, the weirdest thing is that Katie is such a like an asshole about tattoos because she's got a ton of them. And she has plans for more. And yet she's such a pure. She's like, no, she's like that. That that black metal musician who's like, yeah, I can't. I can't play guitar, but uh, I need my black metal to be like v- virtuosos. I don't know. Maybe that's not a thing, but I, so this just, is another. So one more liar. thing. So, so apparently, according to his Wikipedia page, Elijah Wood owns his own record label, which is Simeon Records. But like, here's my beef with it. It's been a record label since 2005 and they've only ever had two bands. So basically, Elijah Wood just fronted two of his friends' <laughs> band's albums and called it a record label. What a great <laughs> <Do you guy>. <laughs> think- <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome, dude. Like, don't, there's no, no beef with that. Do you think that I could like get in good with him and have him release some records for me? Because that would be the tits. I also just got really confused because I saw <laughs> that he also runs the, the, company SpectraVision who did like Maniac and Cooties and stuff but I got really thrown off because I thought I was looking at the record label page because the first movie they produced is called LFO uh- <laughs> All right. Well, then. So back to Troll. Can we go down through some of the crazy lines in this movie? Yeah, because like, I only have one line that I really needed to write down, which was, honey, did you do a lot of drugs before we met? <laughs> which is <laughs> is a good line. <laughs> uh, OK, well, I, I guess we should probably just wrap up what happens at the end of this movie. So uh, um, all, the, but- all the creatures have a musical <laughs> number. Yeah, there's a musical number. Then the credits roll. (laughs) No, no, no. Then they have to fight a dragon. (laughs) And then they they roll the credits. But um, the best part about calling that a dragon. (laughs) Yeah, that doesn't look like any dragon I've ever seen. It just looks like a big troll, which is fine. It just I don't know. They should just said there's a bigger troll. Anyway, so the first great line of this movie is, um, have you been playing with dead cats? Yes. <laughs> yes. Which is a question that we should probably ask Katie on the reg. I hate cats, so. Um, <laughs> but she likes dogs, which is why I like you. Uh, also, her dog is super cute. So um, if, if Katie 
you could do us a solid when this drops and just post like could we could we do like a dog appreciation yeah. thread this week that this drops okay let's do that um matt you can post your parents dogs i have dogs that i'll show okay Any, we know that we know that um uh, JR has like a really cute dog. We got we got some cute dogs in the group. Anyway, <laughs> raw rat burgers, raw. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's when I realized it was Mo. And then I um, and I was like, oh my god! The only re- the reason why she loves rat burgers is because every time they offer her a rat burger, she always wants no, it's Mo. Mo. <laughs> <laughs> that's the joke that keeps giving like that. I'm so glad we did this stuff like first year of this podcast. Dude, I'm I'm excited for when we eventually do uh It's Alive Part Three, Island of the Alive, where Mo is trying to deal with a series of giant mutant babies, like human sized mutant babies. Can we get Katie back on for that episode? Because she <laughs> hates babies. <laughs> I do hate babies. My favorite line is when the little girl says beauty fades with age. What? But it really doesn't. She says that to that fu- to the fucking witch. I didn't write that one down. I totally passed me up. Or he doesn't. No, she says it to Julia Lewis Dreyfus. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that part. Like, but if really, if she knew, she's still the, like one of the hottest women in Hollywood now. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not my type. Already just talked about how I have a strange attraction to weird people. So, all right. So, so we know <laughs> that if Katie ever crosses over to the dark side, she's going after Julia Lewis Dreyfus. Dreyfus. All right. Um, so we get the cocaine jogger, which is actually the, um, is he the, wait, is the cocaine jogger the ex Nam guy? Is that the same guy? I think so. Yeah. 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 Cause he says insurance is my battleground now. And then <laughs> he goes books, never read them owned and operated by liberal scum out to disrespect our president every chance they get. And I was like, what year is it? <laughs> So that was pretty wild. Um, but then we meet the grandma, and the grandma's kind of stacked. Like, <laughs> even for an older lady, she's pretty hot, which makes me feel really weird until we see Anne Lockhart, who is equally hot. And I'm like, this is blowing my mind. So, yeah. Um, yeah, grandma. Grandma's kind of stacked, bro. So, <laughs> Um, this is the weirdest episode we've ever made. Uh, I don't know, man. Go back and listen to Terror Tunes. But <laughs> the troll ring, like it's full of green essence, and when it pricks you, it it turns you into a green turd. Because you know, like when he pokes Sunny Bono, he basically turns into a giant green pile of shit, which then opens up, and there are a bunch of really fun and like kind of charming little monsters that fall out of him. Very fun. I love that scene. That might be my favorite scene of the movie is when Sonny Bono get like when the first how uh, the first um apartment transformation happens because I'm like poke me troll turn me into a beautiful verdant grassy room. I'd love that. And then sleep sacks just come out of him. <laughs> <laughs> but the, when that's happening the troll like puts his feet up. He grabs a playboy. He like keeps looking at the transformation with this kind of disturbed and grossed out face. But then he likes the centerfold while he's waiting. And then these weed demons are like popping out everywhere. But the, my, yeah, the, the creature from the black lagoon ripoff is absolutely my favorite character in this whole movie. There's one little troll, whatever it is that creeped me the fuck out. It's the one that's wet, like the wettest troll. It was just so bad. It's like the teeth are like showing. I can't, I'm trying to think of which one it was. It's like when they're seeing, it's the one that they always do the close up on. I don't remember which one. There, there were like 30 little animatronic animals. I, I remember, is it the one that looks kind of like a Neanderthal? Was that the one? I can't, it's, it's in that scene. It's like the second or third room that gets transformed, but they're pretty, it's, yeah, it's like they just dumped KY on him. Like we went over budget, just use it all. <laughs> yeah, but, but the budget of this movie is deceptively like, well, okay, I don't know how to say it. I was going to say deceptively low because when you look at it, like it's grainy and it's not fantastic looking, but they built entire room sets and they have a pretty decent budget for the shots and stuff like that. It just, I, I don't know. And I really liked all the actual practical effects. There's not very much painting on the the film itself, which always screams like 80s cheapo 
shit. Like the end of uh, Return of the Living Dead Part Two is just super. Like they just paint all over the. They just paint the lightning bolts all over the film, uh, the film stock, and it just looks terrible. But like this movie just is surprisingly obscure for the fact that it really holds up as like an a, a very lighthearted eighties horror movie slash kids save the day. I don't know. I mean, I, it's it's a really good it's a really good movie. I think in general, Galwin is the name of the talking mushroom, and there's a part where it goes party hardy hardy Harry. And it's like the most charming slash stupid thing that happens in this movie. <laughs> and 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 like there's another part that's also charming and stupid where I, I wanted to call him Harry Connick Jr. <laughs> uh, no, Harry Potter, Harry Potter Jr. Right. Uh, wants to – he's like, what's a troll? And I'm like, what – earth is this like what dimension are you on that you don't know what a troll is but then it sets up for Eunice which is a terrible name to uh, explain the very convoluted history of what's going on and and she's like yeah it's it's uh it's like I've been expecting this she's like totally uninspired and uninterested in what's happening but then she was like well I guess I gotta go do this myself and she's kind of a badass especially once she becomes young Eunice but then you know, everything turns out all right, except for the fact that dun dun dun, there's still like one room that's uh the fairy realm. But like the cops let the family get in their station wagon and go <laughs> just like they're like they're they're like, okay, go down to the station and fill out a report. Like, what do you think that report read like? Like, how do you even encap There wasn't one. Yeah, it's like yeah, sure. Do sure, it. officer. We're going to go down to the station. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll definitely fill this out instead of just vanishing. They have all the shit they need and they just leave. It's the worst ending. That's my final note says worst ending. I thought that it was funny, personally. <laughs> like, all right, everyone pack up in the car and leave. Yeah, it, well, it's because it's that's what I'm saying about this movie. It's very much like a kid's a, a child's idea of a horror movie to me and therefore it doesn't make s- I mean we've watched a couple that are like this and um I always feel the same way where it really gets a um gets a pass at least from me as far as logic goes because kids don't have logic it was a good movie I love this movie I haven't seen it since high school so it was really nice watching it again because I've seen the second one a million times. <laughs> Which is really but, a value judgment about you and your your choices in life. Hey, you! Do you want to stay up to date with all the most recent happenings in the gaming industry? Do you crave intelligent discussion on all of gaming's numerous topics? Then head over to Geekscape.net and listen to the latest episode of Geekscape Games. Coming to you at a cinematic 30 frames a second. And we don't even work for Ubisoft. All right, so what did you guys watch this week? <laughs> So I rewatched Westworld the entire season again. Yes, oh, in two damn. days. I don't fuck around. Yeah, it was just as good the second time as it was the first. I mean, everyone's watching. It. Everyone should watch it. It's really just because I saw the Super Bowl on Sunday and they had the um, season two premiere of it, the trailer for it. I have not. I have not watched it yet. I want to, but I just haven't found a copy uh, like, or it hasn't been streaming anywhere that I can get a hold of it. You know, like I'm not going to. You don't have HBO? <laughs> no. It's 2018. How do you not have because all of Because I have Netflix, Hulu, and Shudder. That's all I need. Like that's more than enough for me. You're married. I- you have two incomes. There's no reason <laughs> for you not to have an HBO subscription. <laughs> <laughs> that logic is just ironclad. You're right. I'm going to like, here. Now I have HBO. <laughs> I say that and I don't pay for any of my services. Yeah, it's your ex boyfriends, right? His family is his oh, parents. Okay, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, from like four years ago. We're we're just really finding out. Well, I've already known all this shit about you, but now everybody's <laughs> learning about you, and it's amazing. <laughs> uh, fuck, but <laughs> you should watch it. Just watch it. I'll give you their login. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to like send you an email be like, hey, Katie, just checking in to see, are you in Ohio right now by any oh, chance? They take me off devices all the time. <laughs> That's so, I just re-log back in. It's so weird. Like they, they know what's happening and they're like, you know, we could either kick her off the devices and and annoy her or we can just like change our login. Mm, changing the login is way too much work. 
fuck it. Well, I know they know that they're, that no one in their family is watching True Blood for the five millionth time on their account. <laughs> hey, Katie, you should tell Matt why he should like vampires. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is- well, you, you watch a lot of True Blood. Is, is it because it's sexy vampires? I don't know. It's pr- probably just because it's like Southern, mm. and I really like the way uh, Stephen Moyer says, suke. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I mean, I watched one of the Twilight movies this week. <laughs> well, there we go. Perfect segue. <laughs> so I I went and saw Winchester and uh 2018's not off to a good start as far as horror films go. Winchester is what we're kicking it off with. It was uh, pretty boring and pointless and I didn't like it at all. But something I did like was when I watched episode seven of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I watched the episode Big Sisters. Uh, so in this episode, Kim and Trini sign up to be big sisters for this little, but they can't find her. Turns out the little girl Maria is caught when she's pranking the locker room by cranking up the hot water. Every line of dialogue that this little girl says is absolutely ADR'd by an adult trying to do a little girl's voice. <laughs> and it's insane. Um, Rita's trying to do some shit with something called power eggs, but they can only be opened by a child. So she orders them to create a, and I quote, choky chicken <laughs> that can trick the child into getting into the secret lair. And this thing looks straight out of poultry guys when it shows up. Um, so all the putties start attacking Kim and Trini and they fight them off, but the little girl's kidnapped. And then Z- it cuts to Zach and he's eating something called an Ernie special that's approximately 50 scoops of ice cream with about a dozen bananas and every topping imaginable. Uh, it looks disgusting. Uh, their communicators aren't working, but thankfully Billy has built the Rad Bug, which is a Volkswagen that can go from zero to 3,000 miles in 0.8 seconds and also can fly. That's an actual thing that (laughs) happens. And then to show how pointless this scene is and how much it is to just sell a toy car, they get to the, uh, to the area and alpha goes, Rangers, how did you get here? Our communications are down. And Zordon goes, never mind that it's not important. (laughs) So, so we get to hear the chicken talk just for a couple seconds, and it's absolutely ridiculous because this is a this is a direct impression of what he says. He goes, "Oh boy, I can't wait to get these eggs!" Oh, cluck, 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 cluck. Like it's wow. Biz- this it's the most absurd thing yet. So they morph <laughs> and they form a cheerleader pyramid and fire like a giant laser blast that knocks the eggs into the ocean. And that's oh it. Oh my God, Matt. <laughs> I remember this scene. <laughs> it's like PTSD. Yeah. So oh, then it shit. cuts to Rita and she's flying in on an old timey bike with a giant wheel in the front. And guys, I think I may have ah, done. Yeah. I think I may have done drugs because there's no way that this is an actual <laughs> episode of television. Um, <laughs> I'm having such a hard time following yeah. what's happening right now. And I don't even. I, I heard that this was Power Rangers, but I still so, am not sure. I think so, you're mis- so I've. It turns into me pleading with the audience. I say, guys, this has to be seen to be believed. It's only 18 minutes long. You'll thank me. Holy shit. This might be the ultimate episode. It's more crazy than I can wrap my head around. This little girl is tied up and it is an emotionless, like a motionless mannequin dangling in the sky. And then the chicken cuts the cord and she's just instantly caught by the mega sword. Like there's no drama. The car is remote control now. So she gets in the car and they just remote control her to safety. And like, I want to rent a theater and do a special screening of this episode because I love it so much. And Bulk and Skull are only in it for the last like 30 seconds when they get chili dumped on their head while trying to eat an Ernie special. But that's episode seven of Big Sisters for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Scott, what did you watch? <laughs> wow, you should always end the episodes with that shit because that was no way to follow that. So in boring news, I watched Mayhem finally because it was on it's on Shudder. And um it's a good time. I've been hearing that it's really, really good. Like I heard one podcast say it's the best movie Joe Lynch has made yet. Well, now I can't speak to that because I don't think I've ever seen anything by him besides that, right? I think he did Chillerama. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's way better than Chillerama. Chillerama <laughs> is fun, but it's not like, I don't know. It's very, Chillerama is very disjointed, which. Um, he did Wrong Turn to Chillerama and Knights of Badassdom. 
where his previous films. Oh, I saw Knights of Badass Them, and I, I didn't really love Knights of Badass Them. I thought that it had a cool concept and um, looked pretty cool in a, in a number of moments, but um, just really kind of lost the plot. It just felt like a really lo- a movie that was too long, and it wasn't even a long movie. So in any case, um, yeah, I've seen a couple things by him before, um, and I listened to the Geekscape episode that, John did with him when he was talking about mayhem. It was a great episode, by the way. Um, we just talked about it a couple weeks ago, I think, but on here, but, um, and that's the reason I went to go watch mayhem finally. And I, I liked it. I didn't love it because I felt like it was a little too meta. Like it's not really a meta film and it's, it's, it's more like the, the narration just feels a little bit lame like it just wasn't written very well. There are a couple parts where I'm like, okay, like I get what this character is. I just, he's not real. You know, it's not like not a realistic character, but um, it's pretty fun. I like the idea of a virus that can't be contained and it just had, like they do have an antibody, but like it's, it takes eight hours. So that's the whole concept of the film is that they have, they have eight hours to do anything they want. Basically. Um, I really like the girl from the babysitter. Uh, because she's the female lead in this movie and um, she is wearing like a um, <clears throat> a, a pencil skirt with a, a blazer through the movie and then um, when she gets real she takes off her 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 blazer and her shirt and she's wearing a black Dahlia murder tank top underneath it and I immediately text Mario because he that's his favorite band of all time and I'm like, Dude, I'm watching Mayhem and and the chick from the babysitter is wearing a BDM shirt. And he's like, oh my God. And he he lost his fucking mind. Um, and he was like, yeah, that's from Nocturnal. He knew exactly what like tour it was. And he was like, oh, she's so fucking hot. She's not even my type, but she's so fucking hot because she's wearing that shirt. He was like, he was losing his mind, which was really cool because she's like a metalhead. And, and it it was fun because she was talking about like her favorite songs and she was talking about anthrax and stuff like that. And it took me back to when last time Katie was on the the podcast and we talked about it because that anthrax song is playing right in the, in the, the, the stone throwing scene. Yeah. Any social. Yeah. 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 So it's just, it's funny that that kind of lined up because I hadn't planned it like that, but yeah, they're talking about anthrax and here you are. So, cause you like anthrax, right? I do. I'm looking at Joe Lynch's IMDb page, and I feel like Scott and Joe Lynch would be best friends. <laughs> I'm looking at his IMDb <laughs> picture is him rocking a Return of the Living Dead t-shirt, and the first sentence in his uh, biography is, Joe Lynch was born in Long Island and raised on a steady diet of B-movies, Stephen King novels, heavy metal music, 8-bit video games, and four-color comic books. <laughs> Holy shit! He's been- just the famous famous version of me <laughs> and i like this i hate <laughs> him his first foray into filmmaking was hooking up two vcr cameras and creating remixes of his favorite movie scenes to a new soundtrack okay i'm uh, uh, yep. so katie i'm officially in love with somebody in a weird way so <laughs> now i know what this feels like <laughs> world. Yeah. Uh, all right well that was troll from 1986 as picked by me join us next week when we talk about another movie from 1986 hey katie would you like to join us for another uh experience probably not <laughs> but you will anyway yeah. All right, guys, so we'll be back next week. But until then, I'm going to go to the mall today, today. listening to the Geekscape Network.